Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So my DIY CNC router was just getting too flimsy for what I wanted to do with it. So I upgraded and bought this BF30 milling machine. Now while it was possible to cut some light aluminum things on my DIY router, it just really wasn't working all that well. The whole machine was flexing in all kind of crazy ways. So as I wanted to get more into metal working, I knew I had to do something different. Now, what I would love to have here in the shop is something like a Tormark 770, but that fully outfitted would run me around like 12 to 15 grand. And I don't really have that kind of cash as you probably aren't surprised. So, the next best thing that I could find is converting a normal milling machine. Now, milling machines have a really great advantage. They are super duper rigid, at least compared to my flimsy little router that I built. But they also are stupid heavy. So, since I am in the basement here and there is no elevator or good way to have something delivered here by a forklift or anything, I knew that I had to have something which was at least somewhat transportable. That immediately crossed out stuff like bridge port machines which would be amazing and they would really uh, be able to do some good work and since they're kind of old already they can be had for a decent price. But that just wasn't an option for me. And even this machine, as you're gonna see, is way too heavy for to just carry down in one piece. So what I settled on is this BF30. It's a new machine, it's built in China, and there are a whole bunch of different manufacturers that make it, or at least brand it differently. Mine is from Bernardo, which is an Austrian company, but that's just because that's what I was able to get locally here. The Grizzly machines are basically the same design as well, and Optimum is another brand that is out there, and I'm sure there are many, many more as well. They all have pretty much the same kind of table design and that head up there which has a quill which probably not going to use all that much but could be handy for like stuff like tapping. Uh, you can rotate the head and it, there's an air piston in the back that supports it and there are just regular lead screws on all the axes. Now I got one of the bigger models since I wanted to have still a decent sized work area and it just so happened that this one also has a power feed. I didn't need a power feed, since I'm going to modify it for CNC, that's going to be useless. But the option without a power feed had a smaller table, so I just took the one with. Now, this machine uh, in the end cost me around three and a half grand, which still is kind of a lot, but considering what other used options cost around here, it is a pretty good deal. And then, not that long after I ordered it, it got delivered and it got delivered on a huge pallet and they had to lift it down with a pallet jack and I was like, damn, how am I gonna get that machine down here in the basement? And well, it basically re required me to disassemble the machine into its uh, components. So first I took off the head, which was pretty easy. I was just able to remove some of the extra stuff on the sides then turn it around 90 degrees and by turning the Z lead screw I was able to set it down on a block of wood that I have put it on the table and then unscrew some bolts and it was just the kind of weight that I was barely able to lift myself. And then I moved on to removing the table and the back column support and mostly it went pretty smoothly but there were some quirks. For one, in order to be able to remove the whole Y, X and Y table, you first have to remove the X slab. I didn't know that, so I was trying to just remove the whole table with the X and Y, which wasn't possible, as you can't get to two of the screws. But after completely unscrewing the X lead screw, I was able to get the table off and then also remove the Y table. And it turned out that it was a good idea, because even with two people, the table was really really heavy and then the back support also is super heavy but barely able to be carried by two people 
and the only problem there is that the air piston is a pain in the butt to mount and unmount. It took me a solid 45 minutes to get the screw started in the end where because it's just impossible to reach there and it has to line up perfectly and well after I was fiddling around with it for like half an hour I noticed that the threads on the screw were kind of messed up so after I fixed that it was a little bit easier to get it mounted but still if I ever have to move it again I'm not gonna uh, remove the back support like that I'm gonna have to find some other way but well with it all assembled again down here it was time for some first test cuts and coming from a router of course I was super impressed I had the confidence to just go for aluminum right at the beginning and just took a very light cut and it cut beautifully it made actual chips which is really nice and that means that it's cutting and not just rubbing around which totally was the case on my router and the surface finish I got right off the bat was not all that great. Now the main reason for that, apart from that the machine is still not bolted down, so it uh, is not all that rigid, and also the tool I used. Uh, it's just a random 12mm end mill that I had laying around. Two of the four corners are already kind of chipped, and I'm pretty sure it's also really dull. So. You can't really take those uh, test cuts for the surface finish that you're able to get. I have ordered some other tools that are hopefully gonna be able to uh, make some better surface finishes too. Now, I also put a dial indicator on the spindle since I was really curious what the runner was like. And first, I just put it directly on one of on the end mill and was shocked that it had like almost 0.2 millimeters of run out which is huge you can almost see that and well what it turned out to be is that one of the ER tool holders that I got was not really all that great and also there was a chip inside of the collet which made the whole thing be offset a little bit but once I kind of reseated everything and got a better look uh, the run out is much more manageable there still is more than I would like with around five hundredths of a millimeter that's really still kind of bad but hopefully with some different tool holders and a better tool that's also going to improve now surprisingly the drill chuck style tool holder that was included had a lot better run out uh, i wasn't expecting that but i guess i'm going to be using that for some of this stuff since the er tool holders i got from china really kind of are what i paid for them i guess it does turned out to be a good idea to buy quality tool holders. Now apart from the power feed this is still a completely manual mill and that is soon gonna change. I'm gonna have a whole series on the channel all about the process of transforming a standard manual milling machine into a CNC milling machine. I'm gonna be replacing all the lead screws with quality ball screws and I'm gonna be adding motors and control and everything there's gonna be a whole bunch of videos about that I also made sure to pick a model where the speed control of the motor is with, with a VFD instead of with different gears this is gonna be allow me to hopefully be able to tie the speed control into the control software so I can change the speed from the G code that's gonna be really handy if I want to have different kind of speeds also gonna attempt to add a quick tool changer right now i just have to manually tighten and loosen the drawbar with a wrench and then i can remove the tool holders that system shouldn't be too hard though to automate with just the motor the only problem is that the tool holders kind of get stuck in there and you sometimes have to give it a little bit of a blow with a hammer on the top to get them unstuck so um, that's gonna be uh, some issue for a future video so that's it for this video make sure that you subscribe down below a lot of you aren't subscribed which I don't know why but if you subscribe then you're not gonna miss any of the future videos where I'm gonna take this mill and transform it into which, which is hopefully gonna be a really capable CNC machine you can also check out my Instagram Twitter down below where I 
have already posted about this machine and some of the other stuff. So that's always great if you want to stay up to date. So thanks for watching and until next time.